here to prove it. I'm ready to do it. I can't be afraid now. Put me on the stage now. I'm ready to rage now. I feel like an animal stuck in a cage and I'm ready to break out. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop this time like the last time. You better get ready to race in the top. And we are live once again on YouTube for our final A7FL game of the week as the Patterson U coming off of two straight losses look to give the second loss of the year to the East Orange Renegades. I'm Matt Ryan. We'll be joined throughout the afternoon by Rob Fabian and also Corey CP3 Price making his broadcast debut. But right now, joining me in the booth, the, the boomer to my geo, the lovely, the talented, Corey Hammond. Corey, how are you, buddy? I'm doing well. I mean, we, we've, we've seen a lot of great offense today, especially, I think, uh, from the two winners today. And as a quarterback and an unbiased fan of the <laughs> offense, I am absolutely thrilled at what we've seen today. But and tonight, Matt, we have maybe the closest of the three matchups we have for our games of the week in the A7FL. We have the 3-1 and one East Orange Renegades, who really coming into last week thought that this was their year and are starting things off here the renegades will start with the ball and that one will fall out of his hands at the 23 yard line and that's qua with the return gets it to the 22 so the renegades thinking that it's their year starting again the, the the year off three and oh they're facing the toughest test that they've had to date in the patterson U. not only one of the best teams in the league not only a stalwart championship contender Matt, but they're coming off their first two loss, str two straight loss section of their season since 2018, 2019. So they, right now, they're not coming off of a, vi a huge victory and you, you might catch them sleeping. Matt, this is going to be peak you, and we're joined in the booth right now by former U player, former BIC. You know the vibes, ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? That's big Rob <laughs> Fabian. And <laughs> I just had to move my seat way over because uh, yeah, this is I an enormous it. human we, being. We, that's me great and big Rob are, guard, are, are we're, the, we're Corey's line today. <laughs> and, Corey and, and, and the Corey. to be honest, I, I feel safe. The I feel safe As with the should. line in front of me. <laughs> Rob does all the work. I just so to be first and 10 for the Renegades. Kenneth Stewart's had a pretty good season so far, but this is going to be his toughest test, and we're going to see what this Renegades offense can do against a very hungry U defense. I am not sold on Kenneth Stewart, and I will be the first to tell you that. A six foot, 190 pounder, aka the young bull, like Shane Gillis. The snap. Not a lot of time. Here comes some pressure thrown across. Caught. Cutting up the sideline. And they might be starting. Ooh, the Renegades. They finally found him. Tackle by number 10 of the U. And that's a great play by Kenneth Stewart. That's, that's, that's what he does naturally. With pressure coming from his left, he rolls to his right to his throwing arm. And if you watch Kenneth Stewart, he is the most accurate passer rolling to his right, throwing on the run. It's when he's stuck in the pocket or has to go to his left where sometimes he struggles. But here's Abe L, a great receiver in his own great right. Receiver. Still still celebrating Ramadan. Today's the last day of Ramadan. This this evening, as soon right. as sun goes down, he's going to be feasting. Yeah, but right yeah. now, he's Sean lined Knight. up against the U, looking Sean to Knight get some tackle. get some food for his own palate. The U has to figure out why they can't get maximum pressure against teams with mid to mediocre offensive line. Rolls to his right again. This is where Kenneth Stewart feels most comfortable, gets eight yards. And with four guys on the line, gentlemen, in that play, two wide receivers, empty backfield for the quarterback, and four on the line, Renegades playing what many would consider a traditional offense, not a traditional A7FL a offense. offense. Well, what you've seen, what you've seen this season, 2022, in the A7FL is that the, the standard bearers for the league right now, BIC, with a quarterback that is an elusive runner have shown that we're gonna line up and, and threaten you with the pass because our quarterback is just as good as a running back option. Right. No running back option, he has a check down. And I think everybody's starting to, I've seen the league shift play styles several times because I've been here that long, unfortunately. <laughs> But it's starting to seem like... Where's your grace? I'm looking at your hair right now. I, I ended up with him. It'll be second and two. The handoff. That's not the answer. Oh, and stopped and stifled. It'll be that's third and four. And that's Craig Pitts with the takedown. 
reminiscent of his wrestling career, professional wrestling <laughs> career, taking the Greek freak down, which is which is weird to see him in the backfield. It is an it is an interesting collection this Renegades offense. He, obviously, we know them from last season. A lot of these players from last season when you were behind center for him, Corey. What's the transformation this team has taken? Is it another year playing together? Is well, it you got to find your identity. And when you're when you're a team trying to figure things out offensively, you got to figure out what is your go-to on third and and medium, which is what we see here against a very good defense in the U. And this is this is basically what they've been struggling with all year. Snap. Stewart in trouble, but we'll find the first down and more. The U looking more human by the play, spinning out of it, pulling a huff and now the block by Dontre Haynes. Megatron trying to end the life out there. That's what I mean. That happens to the U too often. But let's give credit to the, the Renegades because what, what you see there is a quarterback who is mobile takes advantage of the open lanes that the defensive pressure gives him because they over pursue he makes he makes the right decision quickly and with enough time to get the first down move the ball downfield and you'll, you'll see right here Craig Pitts was really stuck on wrestling because he goes for a full frontal shot to Kenneth Stewart's face and as my leading receiver last year Kenneth Stewart is obviously capable of running with the ball in his hands in the open field my thing this, this happens to you way too often it's this because year, Craig Pitts has to learn how to throw a working punch. <laughs> First and ten. Stewart snaps. Oh, gets it out of the double clutch. Caught in motion. Picked up by number 11, D'Angelo Brown. Stewart is so good that he's slicing and dicing the U up, or the U is not making mistakes. We got to be honest here. Stewart's not that good. The U that is was, making mistakes. That was a quarterback stepping up in a, a rushed pocket standing in the face of pressure and delivering a very good ball. This is good coverage. Let's give credit where credit hey, is due. that's one. That's right on the money. That's one. And th I got the, you. the defender on the play, Kyle Ward, if that's a, a pass that's behind the receiver, Kwa, that's a, that's a tip ball and it's an incompletion. So on this first drive, Kenneth Stewart is very comfortable getting to his right side, rolling out, and either taking off with the ball downfield or dumping it to one of wide receivers wide open. Haynes and Baptiste are eligible receivers, but the handoff, and that's to Quadu Garrett. Yeah, that's that's going to be a decent play for the Renegades' offense as they keep them honest, but that's what the U can do, is you try to beat them with speed to the outside. It's probably their slowest player on de defense, Isaac, who's had a great year yeah, at the defensive phenomenal. end position, and you, you can't even flank their slowest defensive position player. The, the jet sweep is not going to be it's your go-to yeah, today. This sideline to sideline is crazy. The, the U's not here for that. But again, even I just don't feel like there's teams. The only team I feel like that beat the U is BIC. And then everybody else I feel like the U is well, the, where well, well, to be clear, the rare breed pretty much took care of business last yeah, week. Yeah, let's I guess not. 16 players on the U. No receivers besides Smoke. I mean, I mean, was Huff there? Huff, Huff was, was there. there. Was Moon there? Huff and Moon are not the only Was guys. Pat Coburn there? <laughs> he was the only, those were the only ones. You had enough to win, and they lost. Rolling out to his right. Team. Throws to the check down. Keeps it moving, but will get out of play inside the 10-yard line around the 14. A more capable ball carrier in that position might have scored on that play. Would have scored on that play. You know, that's, sure. that's, that's what we've seen from Kenneth Stewart. And on this drive, when he gets pressure, he goes to his go-to. He rolls out to his right gets the ball out of his hands, and at least in this first drive of the game, churning up almost seven full minutes of game time, guys. Jeez. The East Wait, Orange Renegades the the offense, yeah, which we... Had, wow. This is the first the drive East of the Orange game. Renegades offense, which was, was the question mark maybe coming into today because they really struggled against a DC Buzz, which is a defense, guys, that is not as good as this U defense. Right. So in this first drive see. of the game, Kenneth Stewart is showing why I am not on the Renegades anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, One wide stop. receiver split all the way out. One man in the backfield in motion. The snap, the toss, cutting up field, gets inside, but will he get the first? That run by number four. Yeah, Mo is one of those running backs, and I joke about it, guys, because it's pretty consistent, and I know this Renegades team pretty intimately being, being their quarterback for the last two years. Obviously, I'm on the Hawks now. But Mo, you see him going to the sideline. He's that guy. He'll get you six carries, 80 yards. You ask him for that seventh carry, he's going to tell you no. 
<laughs> so, so you know. So so there's his first carry. He's still got after a four yard gain there and fourth and short for the Renegades. Let's see if they can find a way to punch it in because if you're new to watching this A7FL league, if you're new to this style of football, what we've done to benefit your eyes is take out the soccer player. And even though these East Orange Renegades have put up some stats on this first drive, it will mean nothing if they can't get this four yards on fourth down because you're not given that three easy points by sending in a, a Slovakian kicker to, to, to bail your offense out. In the A7FL, men got to score against other men playing football. And on fourth and four, guys, we're going to see what the Renegades are made of. Do you think they can Renegades, take a timeout. Uh, if Michael. I'm the quarterback for the Renegades, which I think I can say I was recently, what I'm doing is I'm flexing out Dondre and taking advantage of a six foot eight, 260 pound athlete that can run faster than almost anybody on that youth side. I can't even argue that. Taking a look on the chat here, a question from Michael Faith asking, is Huff healed? Huff is, Quattro Huff and is, Huff is I healed. saw Huff start. here, Huff I saw healed. his hair neatly braided. Listen, listen carefully, so Huff is healed, but he's sitting for the rest of the season. Really? I'm telling you. That now. is breaking news. He's sitting for the rest of the season. So who is playing quarterback for the U? Whoever they want, but it won't be Huff. Any wow. reason why they're the, sitting him for the rest of the season? I mean, I, I'm guessing to them there's no point of having him out here right now because the rest of the games are give me games. Oh, in they're giving me games and right now. The Renegades well, are making the it Renegades are about to score a give me touchdown. That was a but terrible a fourth play down, call. Not a good, not not one of their better ideas. And it will be, I believe, a turnover here. We're missing something because on, if that's third and four, okay. Yeah. Okay. That was four. It must well, they gave him the first down. Oh, they did. All right, so right well, now it's second. Well, hey, or well, this maybe is maybe it's first and goal, and we just need to. So to was that was that fourth? In if it was fourth, and they handed the ball off like that, and Xavion Ray Law, the the uh, the law firm himself, mm. um, you know, he is a very shifty back, and for his size, he can get that you know two three yard gain easy. But on fourth and four, I, as a quarterback, I would want the option to you know, especially if I could run, which I obviously can personally. Here's first and goal. The snap. Play action. Rolls, Rolls out on right. first down. Has the lane. Doesn't take it. Caught. Touchdown. There's Aaron Hank Baptiste, former warrior. He's got a touchdown pass from me back in his back in his day. Well, Aaron Baptiste Shut was up, a Corey. warrior. <laughs> You've caught a touchdown from me, I Rob. Have, on my birthday. I, I'm the only fact. one. I think I I'm the only person who, who's ever done commentary for the A7 FL that hasn't caught a, that hasn't touchdown? Caught a touchdown or played it down. Well, LJ, LJ he's personally still, has not scored. I know LJ. LJ did not score. He was a defensive end. When he was on BBK, right? That was his team. LJ scored before. At least it's once. not easy to score against grown men when you're not. Uh, I don't know that because I've well, scored. Well, that's Just a give touchdown. Give me the old man at Ohio <laughs> State run. <laughs> that's a touch. Let, let's let's go back on on track here, and we and love these YouTube. For one. We love these YouTube games because we just get stream oh, of yeah. consciousness. But crazy. this is a huge first drive for the Renegades, oh, who huge. are are looking to not only beat the U but put them in their coffin. They they they've done something that only the BIC and the Rare Breed have done, and that's score on the U on the first drive. I mean, the Renegades are a flag. Team yeah, in the if you're gonna right cover now, if you're gonna cover Dondre Haynes, even though Pittman, you know. Craig Pitts out there. Pittman is his wrestling name. is is a, an enormous human in his own right. He, he, he needs actually to climb him like the Alpine. Actually, one of the worst. Right. Just for YouTube, one of the worst injuries I've ever felt is when I tackled Craig Pitts on why, an interception. Why are you tack oh, okay. I, <laughs> on an interception. Because I'm like, what, the, what, what, what scenario has you tackling? Pitts? On an interception. Why did you go for that? And just for everybody at home, I will <laughs> you threw three times in a row right? repeat that I threw an interception. <laughs> I tackled him by his ankles. One of the hardest hits I've ever taken. And, yeah. and if you watch this league, you've probably seen me at least, you know, maybe a thousand times. You shoot a lot of grass on our television. <laughs> yes, he and he turns red when he gets hit, and it hurts my feelings, <laughs> especially when you were behind me getting hit. I turn around and see Corey red as listen, well. When red Big when Big Fern nose. just just sent oh it in packing, God. and it was just Big Rob blocking for me. It was tough sled for BIC back in those listen, days. It was tough. That, that was a tough one. Going for one here after the penalty slips through, brought down. And 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 if the Renegades oh want to win this game, they want to have a better opportunity on those extra points. Sometimes you just got to take what you can get, and on on a play like that. 
that that extra point opportunity is going to be huge if this ends up being a tight game as we continue on. And uh, taking a look at the chat here, LJ Smith saying he scored plenty. Right. I, I, My I'm bad, sure, LJ. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm here to just throw shade because I hear some of the shade that you've thrown me. But <laughs> to be fair, LJ's got my back this year at a, at a minimum. So I should have I should have talked about all of the the highlight film that that is is in the locked up town beef <laughs> in the archives. Vault, he said it, the, all LJ's film is in the vault. The vault is locked too. I don't <laughs> even know the combination. That's Kyle Ward, and, and we didn't see him against the rare breed last week, Matt, but against BIC, he was one of the standouts okay, for the U, okay. and I think he is is, is one of the, the guys that they're focusing it. on, trying it, to incorporate him, uh, a former Savage player. Let's talk about it, Corey. Let's talk about it. It, it. He's there against rare breed. It's not a different game at all. Like, he doesn't make what a was, difference. I'll, I'll ask you this, Rob. What was the problem with the U against the rare breed? Was it their wide receivers? Because I saw a lot of great catches from some of their wide receivers. I wouldn't say that Kyle Ward coming in at wide receiver is going to be a huge upgrade Kyle over Ward. guys like Pat Colbert. No, no, no. What I would say is upgrade, that but with him, if, if, Ashanti, Ashanti by himself is a threat. But with Kassan, um, Sis, Sisson, all these guys next to him, he's even more dangerous. I, I'm Here's surprised, Ward Rob. trying to be dangerous here. Cuts to the Ooh. outside. Yes, Cutting up the sideline. Gets through Haynes. Gets through two defenders. He hit and one brought hus. down just a, at just a mini hus. A hus. <laughs> I a am surprised, hus. Rob, as an offensive lineman, knowing as, as important as that aspect of football is at every level, at every version of football, whether it's 7-on-7, seven seven, whether it's flag, whether it's 11-11 college, whether it's the NFL. Yeah. The reason Patterson you lost against Rare Breed is because they couldn't block, and right. when you can't 100%. block, it doesn't matter who you have running out wide receiver. And Kyle Ward is, is as you can see, Kyle Ward is one of the premier skill position players in this league. His absence against the Rare Breed is not the difference. I think the difference is, is if, if, if the U is going to win games moving forward, they're going to have to get back to U football, which is dominating the trenches, being a better defensive line than the, the team they're playing against, being a better offensive line than the team they're playing against, and finding guys like number two, that you see a tight end, Dot Boss, as they come out with a big backfield they were with D-Train and Daryl Luck. injury play. And after that BIC game, I've watched that entire U team disintegrate. Green Moon starting at quarterback. They disintegrated. These guys were hurt. Now with this tough line, we'll see how it looks now. A handoff to the D-Train, and the D-Train gets derailed at the station. One thing you're not going to do against this Renegades team is face their defensive line and think it's going to be easy sledding. So, first-hand knowledge, as you see Malik, I see you Malik, the Predator, number 34. And that's Jerron Haynes. So if you thought Megatron, Dondre Haynes, was bad news, look at his older brother, <laughs> who in college played safety. Yeah, that's right. He played Number safety? 33 played safety. That's a big ass, a big behind safety. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say, that YouTube, is a you big, big expletive YouTube. safety. Well, hey, YouTube, that is a big up? expletive safety. I didn't know we could curse. So if, 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 is ass a curse? I don't know. First, it's second and ten. Play action. Moon on his bicycle being chased down by Megatron and run out of the gates. Now, remember, I said Trump. number 33, Jerron Haynes, was a safety in college. He is not in college anymore. No, so that's very much not. And, so and you can see so Moon finds some space, gets the first down, first and ten for Patterson. The heavier they get, they get closer to the line. <laughs> so right now, I'm pretty sure he's playing linebacker. I'm right? relatively that's heavy. That's why I'm under center. <laughs> exactly. He's going to linebacker. After he gets a little guess heavy, my he's guess, guys, line. guess my weight. I'll, how tall are you? How tall are you? How tall are you? You got to guess that too. Damn, come on. Six of no, no, no. You're like five eleven. Oh my God! Oh, I hate you now, Rob. <laughs> first and ten. <laughs> I'm six foot even. You're Moon. Six foot even. One receiver in motion, the handoff, cutting up field, and this Renegades defense. This is a Renegades that lost last week. Daryl Luck. You can watch that Man. buzz tape, and what you'll see from the buzz is pretty good. Not elite, but pretty good offensive line play and very on-time quarterback wide receiver play because Mark Diggs earned a lot of respect around this league. We had guys after Mark Diggs' performance against the Renegades who were 3-0 facing the D.C. Buzz, a team that the Hawks beat. Because right now it's going to look like the Renegades are just aren't good at it. But look at, look at Malik coming off. The, no one's blocking him. That's no. Trey Baskervilles. No one's blocking him. That's Dondre Haynes. No one's blocking him. And if you don't block defensive linemen, and Rob, well, how is your offense going to function? And the snap on the, uh, the hurry-up offense. This one thrown down. Field. Caught in the hip pocket. Slip slides. <laughs> Anthony DeMars. 
getting his first pass, his first catch. Welcome to the A7 that's the NFL. Receiver, that's the wide receiver that was at time playing quarterback for Savage that's last year. That's and DeMar. since Savage, we the best. Demar is not is not on the Savage anymore. Do you pick him up and add him late to the season? And what you see is that when a quarterback has the ability to slip away from the Renegades' defensive pressure, they rush a little bit slower and and allow for a deep pass, which I love Johnny English, one of my guys, and I threw an interception to him, maybe just because I love him so much when I played against the Renegades hand in hand. very tall. But you, 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 were, you made good throws. He's very tall and deceptive. We won't talk too much about me because that will make me cry because I wanted to beat them. But... The point is, is that in this game, when you have a guy like Moon at the quarterback, you have to rush a little bit differently. Oh, and it takes, sure. it, and it, it and almost neuters the best yeah. aspect of the Renegades team. Can and by giving that. him that extra time, one of the weaknesses of this Renegades defense is their secondary, which I wish I had enough time and, to take advantage of myself. And Corey, you talk about how much that Renegades game meant to you. Right now, this is for whoever's second place in the in the region. They're, they're, a seven o'clock game against the you and anybody has not meant more in years. Yes. Right, right. It's been a long time if, since it felt like this. If the Renegade win, the you are on the outside looking in of the top two seeds in the area, and that's caught by it's number 19. Right and what you see is, is that the extra points, guys, are going to be so big. And the you has experience taking advantage of opportunities like that, getting the two points there. The Renegades are still, especially on offense, learning on how to navigate the two points, as you see Huff there in street clothes, but navigating the one point and two point conversions. And although both of these offense score on their first drive, the U take an early lead, 8-6. And the thing is, the U took way less time to score than the Renegades. That's gonna matter late in the game. The Renegades- Well, what's gonna matter time. is is that the, the, the the Renegades come out with a great first drive, great momentum, put points on the board, which was the plan. Right. That's new for the Renegades, guys. Very new. So if if it's if it's a shootout, guys, the, Renegades will not win. the U is in a much better position with the guys that they have on their roster and the familiarity they have with winning as this young East Orange Renegades team is still trying to find their identity on offense. Because there's no question if the U is going to score, it's just, it's if you can score. All I got to say is that I see a lot of returns in this league, and my man Quan, who uh, last year was, was by the same U team, was made into a Facebook meme, if I'm getting it correctly, as a 36-year-old almost. <laughs> um, you know, the, the hesitation is more important on the return, as we saw with Khalil Green with two E's. And we scores. saw that with Ashante Worthy, too. And Ashante Worthy. Uh, uh, obviously, I'm biased. I'm talking about my own team. And shout-outs to C Steve Polchowski right now, drinking at MJ's. He told me to shout him out, and he's <laughs> the owner of my team, and I'm trying to get the start next week. Ooh, and Bobby and Newman. He's, but he's at the MJ's, though. I've been to a, one of my best friends. MJ who sponsors for Hawks. That's why, you know. All the sponsors the Hawks? Yeah. That's awesome. They got, they, they got good wings. They, they got good food. They got good drink. MJ's Sports Bar. Give Visit us them. food. Send some to Asbury MJ. Park Stadium. We hungry. Tin Falls. Send it location. Send You're just like five minutes away. As we see, first and ten for Kenneth Stewart, former wi my wide receiver. First I'm going to take credit for anything he does in this he has league. He to make you a believer, man. I'm still not a believer. You, just, you guys just love me so much. You're just still the a little bit upset. In trouble. I'm not a believer. Oh. I'm not. But it's not fair with no blocking now to has, say that anything different. That he just had. They, he scored on a drive before this with the Shout same Shout out to blockers. Booby Miles. Marcel Bates. Man. Tap outs for sale. Wearing a different jersey because he's constantly <laughs> hiding from Ryan DePaul, who has banned him from this league. And it's funny, but it's the absolute truth that he's wearing a Stevenson jersey covering his face with a, a, a ski mask you would rob a, a Listen, quickie mark with. If they wore white, he'd probably have on a fading jersey. I'm not going to lie to I still to this day want to know where my Corey Hammond Savage jersey is that Marcel Chapman was wearing throwing interceptions oh, nice. sullying my beautiful name. <laughs> I think that was like one of my first games here. Yeah. And I was very I was very petty about it. I, I did not let I it go. It. I it. Rondo, Second Ron Brown, nine. a great player in his own right going in motion. The handoff and Brown in trouble. What can Brown do for you? Cutting up the sideline. Why did Surf just get destroyed on the end like that? Because the you are vulnerable, man. 
And, and we talked about this on Stadium. Play. Play. <laughs> you keep talking like that, like you don't play. You play. You gotta I came in to go to the guys. bathroom at halftime of my game, and I still shouted out to Maryland, let's go. <laughs> wow. Because I thought I was going to be playing the Gators today, so I was, oh, right, I, right, was right. I was looking at the, a film of Sly Washington playing cover two zone flat defense at corner and letting a guy go Passed him twice on goes where he barely even looked at it. I, I was, was I was licking my game. chops. That's what I'm saying. I was licking my chops ready to play the Gators. Thank God I played the animals and got my five for five, 270. You oh. sending everybody and their mama, and that one will be incomplete, and it will be fourth down. Not going to be super negative. Everyone can hate on me after this. Kenneth Stewart drops straight back, stays in the pocket, misses. When he rolls out to his right, he's one of the best quarterbacks that I've seen. Every really other like time... Game. Every other time as a quarterback, when he either drops back and stays in the pocket or he's forced to his left, he misses accuracy-wise. So this is his first year as a starter, and he's going to learn this, this league and this position as we continue to go along. He's obviously shown that he's a very capable playmaker last year, being one of the top wide receivers in this league. Right, which is why the, tra the transition to quarterback was a shocker to me. I mean, I, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna be the Ryan Fitzpatrick for you the know, Renegades listen. and wait for me to make one mistake and have a guy come in. in. Yeah, my nah, thing is, I blocked I for some that. pretty. I, I think my resume you, of quarterbacks. You, bro, you blocked, blocked for, for Nemeth, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I blocked for a lot of great quarterbacks. So I think I have a nice say. So when I see a decent quarterback, and I'll say something. That's why I'm so big on OG Buck. And this is this is what I'll ask because. I <laughs> Let me tell you, because you're getting you're getting some great behind the scenes footage because the best opportunity that Corey Hammond as a quarterback, and this is this is Corey Hammond, the commentator, the best opportunity that Corey Hammond had as a quarterback was when I love you CP3, took over for CP3 with a championship defending team, and I had a line. Had and we played lines. the Immortals and we scored 40 something points in Pennsylvania. The, the tape is still lost. This tape is lost. I threw for 500 yards, people. Rob. Oh, God. On God. They, they shut down Courage and they said, let, let the ugly white guy. And then I was beautiful that day. <laughs> Our defense led up 55. And that was my best shot at, uh, at, a, at, a, at a championship. And I owe it all to and Big Rob Fabian. The same Immortal team went and dropped 50 to zip on the U the very next week. And, and the very next the year, in the first round of the playoffs, I was the quarterback for BIC, and they dropped 50 on a zip. I don't remember. Because that. I had zero blocking by anyone other oh, than Rob yeah, Fabian. No, it was bad. And I was blocking the best. You blocked defender. two people at a time. <laughs> <laughs> and there well, were still see. two free guys. And we're stressed. back to live action, to I, quote I LJ Smith. I was stressed. I'm just, I'm just along for the ride. <laughs> like I'm just, I'm just. Matt, you here. are going down memory lane, uh, <laughs> Matt, I was and you are a out, passenger man. in the back seat. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just here, Steve so I don't Johnson, get fine. Number four, going in motion. First and ten for Moon. Moon with two running backs set to and his left. And one of them right. is the D train, and if my money's on it, they're gonna go chew, chew, guys. Sending five are the Renegades and the D train. Thomas strikes again. One on one. <laughs> Let, let's be honest though. It's, it, it's it's not a stretch to see D train in the game because when you see him in the game, you usually hand the ball yeah. off to him or they use him in play He's action. And run. Moon, if anything, at the quarterback position, which isn't his forte, guys. If is anything, not, you don't is, think if so? anything at the quarterback position, it, the the best skill he has at a, as a quarterback is his understanding of the game, and he does call good offensive plays for the. But U. you are aware that Moon played quarterback for the U before they were the U. But if while. you have a healthy Huff and you have a healthy Huff U, wasn't around. who is your quarterback? Mo Mo no, Huff wasn't around. No, he, I know he's that. asking the hypothetical. And I'm if saying you have that if you have the opportunity to use Moon in his more natural position at wide receiver and Huff at quarterback, what are you going with? As Sadiq Pitts gets the, the sweep to the left side Ooh. and gets Trey Baskerville, Mr. Oh, yeah. Do Everything is making sure that so. you know his name. Yo, guys, by the way, Trey Baskerville, interesting fact. His sports car is a cheetah print, which is ridiculous. Cheetah print? His car has cheetah uh, spots on it. Yeah. Don't, that's, don't hate that's the That's the uh, deep Yo, my, dive my information you my get Chrysler from Pacifica, My Chrysler Pacifica needs a cheetah print. As we have third and five, third and six for the U, up eight to six on the East Orange Renegades. Yeah, sorry, that, that, that whole cheetah print thing I thought was going to work. I missed. Well, let's see if this play works. 
on the that snap. Was my that was my only incompletion of the game. In motion. <laughs> You're gonna live with that quarterback power. keeper, and here he comes going does. downfield. Haynes locks himself. There you go, quick hustle, quick hustle. He's on the floor, had his legs in the air. He can't yeah. have that. He's a and large he human being. And he did not make contact with Moon. No. But you, the three of us know that Moon went out of bounds because that that is an yeah, enormous human being. There's no yeah. reason, but Moon makes those kinds of plays. Like Moon's not gonna get hit for nothing. It's a waste of play, a waste of hit. A small guy is tough guy. Well, as, but let's let's see how we got here. Let's take a look at the first quarter stats. Twenty and if, in terms of balance, the the rent the renegades a little better in terms of balance. But the U getting those passing yards, having that slight edge there, sixty-five to fifty. But the renegades finding a way to start the run, and it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out if the U are able to get into a rhythm. And the handoff pushing up field will not get the first down. And it's interesting to see those stats, Matt. When you look at those stats for the Renegades, their rushing yards, pretty much I say it at this point, 70% of their rushing yards are going to come from pass plays that they call that Kenneth Stewart chooses to run. So what you see from the U, at least so far in this game, is we have 11 minutes in the second quarter. The U call run plays to get run yards. What, at least at this point, the Renegades have to call pass plays if they're hoping to get on. The whistle will blow and we will be set. And when you have to call pass plays every play, even though it's my preference, what, what, you're, what you're taking away is the opportunity for your offensive line to run block, which, exactly. Rob, you love run blocking. It gets you in the game. Yeah, it keeps you in the game. Blocking. It's, it's very run, physical. Like, and and so one thing that I've heard as a quarterback from my offensive line constantly is that if, when you call pass plays over and over and over again, it puts the offensive lineman in a position which they don't want to be in, which is the defensive, I have to backpedal and stay in front of a guy who might or might not have the athleticism on me because in, in not modern football, including the A7FL, defensive linemen are a little bit more athletic than offensive linemen. As we see second and five. It'll be for, actually, it'll be first and 10 after the penalty. Oh, the penalty, first awesome. and five. Off first sides. Excuse me, I'm messing up everybody. The handoff, cutting up field is Pitts, and he will get to around the 30 yard line. Dropped around the 31. And, and guys, we, uh, to pose a question to both of you, when you take a look at the entire expansion of the A7FL, how long do you think these other divisions, these other teams, because we're seeing the Renegades and the Hawks finally catch up mm -hmm. to the BIC and the U, how long do you think it'll take a Florida, who we've seen play some great football, the Queen City Crusher undefeated, how long on the, it'll be second and eight? Well, I, I'll, I want your answers after the play. The quick screen to Joel Rivera. Rivera will be brought down at the 20, not the 31 Matt, the talent level in New Jersey and Baltimore specifically is very, very, very high. The guy who just caught the pass is a former New York Jet. We're not talking about, you know, Joe Schmo that works for UPS that all of a sudden switched to Amazon because Amazon's the only company that does any delivery anymore. We're, we're, we're talking about a former New York Jet, Moon, a four-year starter at William Patterson. We're talking about a 12-year opportunity as we see the Jet Sweep. We'll get no gain on the play, and that will be third down. So great play by the Renegades there. But New Jersey has had a 7 for football, which is a very different brand of football. Rob, you can speak to the offensive line play. I can talk about the quarterback play. And Matt, you can talk about the skill position play with all the skill position plays that you've made in your <laughs> career. <laughs> that, that, that New Jersey has been playing this for at least like 12 years that I can even remember, maybe exactly. even more so because it goes back 15, to even town beast. Well, so we're 15. talking about a, learning the game, evolving the game, and involving a lot of like the, the, the fusion of flag and, and full contact tackle 11 on 11 that, that New Jersey and Baltimore have grown into over the years, over the decade in which we've been playing this game. Ohio, Florida, Vegas, California, they're still learning this game and they know football they don't know this but game. they don't know A7 yet. And so it's going to take a little bit of time as Trey Baskerville gets right through. Dot boss uh, wide open. Would have got it. Turnover. Fourth and three. And the Renegades right now are in exactly the position they wanted to be because if this is a close game, guys, the Renegades are in the position they want. Yeah. I've talked to Renegades guys, and, and the whole conversation is that a Corey Hammond offense is not going to work against the U. So this is the the litmus test for the Renegades. The entire reason that my 
body is not in there right now, and I'm trying to censor myself. The, the, the reason that they have Kenneth Stewart in there that has that extra threat of running the ball is because they believe that stylistically, their offense is better with the opportunity for their quarterback to run the ball because the Renegades right now are not a top offensive line in this league. They're not a top running, like just straight running team in this league. So the quarterback is gonna be asked to do a lot. And then this is the litmus test right now to see if, if, if getting rid of me was a great decision or potentially a bad decision. Double reverse and that brought, brought down that's number that's, that's three they, taken they down. Go with, they go with a misdirection, they go with a jet option, and then they try to hand it off to the running back, but Air Jamaica is, is, has been a, a vet in this league. He does whatever they ask him to do, whether it's catch the ball, whether it's block, whether it's make a defensive play, and he constantly is covering his face and showing his gut, which is very questionable to me. Um, but to it's, answer your question a little early about when these other leagues are actually gonna... When a, yeah, when you know, are these other divisions balls? are gonna catch up. Um, Baltimore, you know, God bless their souls, they took a while to get into it. Like, it's, I think out of all the years of Game 7, there's only been two years where it wasn't a New Jersey 3. We had the Pennsylvania, they had the 18. 18, then the, the Pennsylvania I Immortals, think, and, and the, the Baltimore, Baltimore Gators. Gators. Those are the only three teams outside of New Jersey teams that have won. But I will say that Baltimore, as far as a curve, they got there faster. Second and ten by Ashton. In trouble. Rolls out. In trouble. Here's the opportunity to break the game open. Can't do it. But we'll get some yards on the third down. I don't agree that Baltimore got there faster. Baltimore was playing when we didn't know anything about them. They were watching us and copying us before That's true. we knew anything about them. And when they finally came here, because they said it themselves, they said, oh, let's be honest. We could beat them. We could tell they got on that field and realized that those four quarters that they watched are different from the four quarters and, that they and, played. And to put it into context, that's that's maybe 2013, 2014. Right, yeah, yeah. That's nine years ago. Yeah. And then they won in 2018. Right. So, so, now, so, so it took them it took them maybe like six, seven years to figure it out. Right. And in 2018, to be fair, Baltimore dominated the league, had two teams and, in and the that's championship. And a year New Jersey kicked back because we were beating up on kick people back so much. Or they, or they got New beat. Jersey was calm. I, I all right, wasn't all even right. And but, but then... But to be fair, 2019, who won? PA Immortals. PA Immortals. But so, that's when so, New Jersey was on the comeback. But right. Immortals never stopped. They've been coming back. Immortals is a is an amalgamation of seven teams. That's why we got together. No time. No Has to get through. Get away. Can't get away. I'm trying to give a quick. <laughs> you heard Moon is not an Ashanti worthy. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's be fair. He's Isaac not on the tackle. He's not. He's not the. The, the extremely elusive player that's going to make every mistake by your offensive line go away. They said when you're made you, of glass. What? <laughs> Somebody on the YouTube comment said, you're made of glass. I'm made of glass? <laughs> Yo, if you ask Big Mo Laffy, and, and you speak to this, Big Rob, you ask Big Mo Laffy, who some hits. I am some made hits. of iron. You've taken some hits. I've Tell me that. a game that I have missed. Now you no, can you can say that I'm not a good quarterback. No, no, no. But you, you cannot say I'm either. made of glass. Well, I, I would I would like to see whoever said that stand in front of me <laughs> and try to break me because I will give well, him seven Corey. honest hits Pause. and I guarantee he will not have any effect on me Don't because every player in this A7FL league knows that they can find me in the pocket and has tried to take me out and no one has ever done it. Knock on wood. He's Corey Hammond, and he approves this message. The three-on-one throw-off, it'll be you, Paul. That is blasphemy. I'm not made of glass. I, I still think... Well, the uh, there's an interesting... Here's some uh, Jermaine Simmons in the YouTube chat. Bring the A7FL to St. Louis, Kansas City, Detroit, Indianapolis, and Chicago. Oh, Chicago. I, I'm not Let me ask guy. you this, Matt. If all of these guys who think that they are going to take on teams like the U, better yet, teams like the Renegades, if they want to get involved, Matt... How can they do that? Well, Corey Hammond, if you head on over to a7fl.com slash players or a7fl.com slash owners, you can find information on how you can be a part of the future of football. But if you want to bring a division to Chicago, Indianapolis, Atlanta, Dallas, St. Louis, Houston, let's go. We got to go to Gateway City. Maybe when we go back to Ohio, go We're to talking Cleveland. about St. Louis, Missouri, right? Yeah. yeah. That's the show me state. So if you're going to talk, show you better show me. First and I would, ten. I would A7 love to see you. A7FL.com slash owners for more information on how you can, can be a part train. of the future of football. I would love to see an Atlanta team. I, I think I would love for to the see Magic City By the way, though, Atlanta, 
You don't need just one team because that's not going to work out for no, you. No, not one. Get a division and let's find out who's better, Atlanta or Florida. Let's and then we got some conversations, yeah. guys. But I think Florida's the next. I personally I, think out of all the new expansion teams, I want to see. Florida's next. I want to see the Carolinas because I feel like they're on the come up when it comes to high school football. Yep. Texas is obviously the destination. Texas, is the most Texas we need state. to see because Texas, I'm not, I don't in, in, in Texas, I'm out. Real, football is a religion. Yeah. I'm and out. I would love to see the worshippers <laughs> like we talk about BIC, Daryl Luck with the. Oh, and Jerron. Uh, someone in the chat. Haynes with the tackle there. Darryl Corey Luck. about to drop a diss record. <laughs> Alexa, play the E. No, all jokes aside, I think, I think I think Florida's next. We're gonna see a Florida but team. But let's be honest, the based on based seasons. on the statistics, guys, you would assume that Florida and California got the ballers, Here's but the Vegas thing. is sh putting up all the numbers in Force, the West Coast. The Force guys. are doing really good. Let's take a look at this replay here. Driving right Jeez. through the neighborhood, but having to be stopped in Why his tracks. Rob, Rob you could like that. Rob, you could speak to this. The U shows up to football games and expects to be the tougher, better team. For sure. This year they are not. So they have to hold something deep within them to beat teams, especially when you see Predator coming non-blocked against teams like at the, the 49. That one caught by number one. That is uh Kareem uh, Prince Dream. I do say when Texas opens up, I, I mean New Jersey had a nice run. Baltimore had a nice run. We can call it. We, I mean, we saw earlier today, we guys. We saw we saw a BIC player come out in a a a, a morning a cap, bonnet. right? Yeah. A bonnet. If Texas open up opens up, I need to see boots and cowboy hats. Please How, don't. You do that. can't play don't football in cowboy boots. You if you are a white lineman, you can absolutely Please wear don't. both. Don't do that. Someone's Rob, asking if about. I put a, if I put a cowboy hat on you and boots, you could still block Bro, ninety percent of the defensive. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you gave Asian, up. Asian so. persuasion in the chat saying Texas have the best football players. Period. I don't well, know. Show do us. That. Show us. A7ML.com slash players. Moon Let's throws go. to the check down. We'll get to the 50. And look at that. The human highlight with the big play. And it'll be second down and a big gain of about seven. Imagine playing against a Texas player and he has gold grill fangs in his mouth. As nah, mouth imagine if, 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 yeah, no, imagine like if he has a longhorn gold belt buckle That's running crazy. down the field. I'm I would I would root for the Houston chopped and screwed. The Houston chops and screwed make sounds like a team make that's gonna happen. work. Make it happen. Paul Wall, make it happen. Make it happen. I will <laughs> play quarterback for the your team. Houston not that you need me to play. Screwed. Not that I you need that. me to play quarterback for your team, but that. I'm a backup by the way. So I'm taking all black. open black. applications. Col colors purple and black. Oh, yeah, of oh my god. Purple and black. I also nah. want I also want an NYC division. Maryland's terrible at football. Dark purple. I want an I want an NYC. It's gotta be orange and white. If you're playing in Texas and you're not orange or white because the Texas no, no, Longhorns no. are Houston terrible. Houston blue. Houston blue. Houston blue. Yeah. Houston Oilers blue. Yeah. The All snap. Right. The throw. This one deep. Oh, and my and man. There, and wow. there There's is. definitely some yellow after that. Yeah. If there is not a penalty after that, There's oh, there it is. The there field. it is. Pineapples Beautiful. galore. And shout out to the refs today because, like, it's very difficult to keep games like we saw today, which unfortunately were both blowouts. It is very difficult to keep it from becoming a fight because grown men have pride. So let's shout out to the refs today. The refs don't get enough credit in the A7FL, and they've been doing a great job all season making sure that. And we've got a fellow sure A7FL that. player in the chat, Carlos Croslin. Oh no, my God, the goat! Uh, when you're not when you're not playing when you're not playing wide receiver, I mean when you're not playing quarterback. Excuse me. You can be the goat. You can be the satyr at quarterback. Oh, and look at this! Some goat level stuff from Kareem Moon. A flag on the play, but uh, Carlos Croslin, a wide receiver, we've seen him play quarterback at a few times this season uh, for Baltimore, Corey. Football oh, he's is football. Mad at me. He's a gator. It doesn't matter gator? where you're from. Stop saying you nice because you're from a different state. Nah, this guy's in Texas. Uh, way yo, Carlos, Carlos, first stop, of all, stop, first of all, Carlos, Carlos stop, we've stop. seen you make ex like amazing plays and have like a Snap. super shake as we have first and ten moon playing quarterback Slip looking slides. to make it magical out there. Green moon on a Sunday night off the water. If you heard what I was saying, you. if you heard the noises I was making, that was Disney because that was magical. And when Moon's running back and forth, you see Demar, former savage quarterback His at second times. Second touchdown of the day. <laughs> second touchdown of the day and the 
Patterson, you are taking control as M. Dot, of course. Umar used to be known as Spider-Man. He wore a yes. full face mask before the face mask was popular. He wore a full face mask to hide his appearance and he used to terrorize people on Savage as a receiver. Yeah, by the way, that's stupid. That's a terrible mark. And it was an ineligible no, he, receiver he, downfield. The touchdown will be brought back. He, was, he wasn't trying to market himself. There is a certain reason why everybody knows who Corey Hammond is, and I'm an average player at best. <laughs> it's because of marketing, by the way. I am hilarious. Yeah, no, you're, you're I will take credit for being funny. I'm not a great football player, but I am at least a funny person. And it will be first and 15 after the penalty. And it will be the Patterson get the, the call sent back after an illegal receiver, an ineligible receiver downfield. I'm talking real spicy in that live chat. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> keep it spicy. I mean, I love My Indian own. food, and, also, and I haven't had you, it in a while, I, I so I'm looking for some tiki masala. I, I, am going, I have been jonesing for butter chicken for like a month. Oh, half. butter chicken is the <laughs> ish. Um, I want this question answered from the chat. Who do you think would be drafted first in a hypothetical A7FL reset? Yeah. And no need to reset there. Kareem Moon brought down, Silky Smooth brought down yeah, by number 34 of the Renegades. So it'll be That's third the predator. Down. I'm seeing a lot maybe, of Matt Yo, Malik, Matt Malik, as we look at a, a close-up on him, it may be one of the most underrated players in this league. And it, it, if you, ha we talk about drafts, and you're gonna talk about drafts. If you win the sixth round and you're just trying to take a player that's gonna make a huge impact, uh, I'm gonna tell you from first-hand knowledge, Malik, Malik the Predator is, nah, last Malik, year he was nah, good, he was, he was okay. just not healthy. He was okay Second and 12, year. move. 50 seconds left to go in the half, thrown towards the end zone. Caught <laughs> Demar again. Yo. The second touchdown for the second time. You and you were on the ankle? board. What grabbed his ankle? Why did he fall like that? A worm. Yeah, he got, he got turfed. Huh. And it will be set in on the touchdown for the U. Uh, we're seeing we're seeing Matt Riddick, we're seeing Huff, we're seeing Sterry, Huff, then Matt. You need a QB, Huff, of course, Sterry, not Huff. Asante Huff, BICQB, Megatron, top five. There was your Megatron. At least somebody said it. Sterry, At least, Huff, man, Sterry. he's playing every single play of the field. He's always making a play. And look at that. And That's it's not his run. fault oh, that DeMar is walking by himself in the end zone and guys are falling down instead of covering him. That is 14-6, Patterson. And if the East Orange Renegades are going to go win this game, Let's they're going to have to be able to stand at the defensive back position and not fall down when there's a pass in their direction. Let me ask the chat real quick. Can I get a one in the chat if you think Huff is a better quarterback than Sterry. If you choose Huff, put one in the chat. If you choose Sterry, put two. That's not fair. Recency up. bias is going to say nah, that Sterry's a better quarterback. No, no, I'm but Huff, a is, Huff. A, is a multiple-time MVP, and when he has time in the pocket like Sterry has this year, he is unstoppable. Oh, my oh God. and God. collapsing into each other. And let's give credit. Yo, I'm going to say that Samad Jenkins, the linebacker number one for the Renegades, not only covered D-Train, but he covered... Rashad Knight over there talking tons of trash with terrible camo, black, uh, excuse me, green and orange Miami camo. And and Rashad, Samad Jenkins covered two guys on that play. He's one of the best linebackers, at least running linebackers in this a lot, a lot of Clearly people in chat back. Yeah. I am Clearly going to give the Renegades, except for Kenneth Stewart, my bad, because you took my position. I'm going to give the, the, the Renegades tons of accolades tonight if they keep it even close well, let, let's to say the a year. hypothetical line like let's say the hypothetical line is six and a half are are the, if the east under orange the if the east orange covers six and a half against the u they're doing what they needed to do which is get rid of me oh right uh, rob rob <laughs> i'm great you love you me went, you recruited me you to bic 100 percent throwing today they don't listen they're fine you had a day you, had a Stop, day. you did no, no need to have an emo oh, party what? i mean they're human beings but they still are animals guys <laughs> they have zero wins on the season if and if we're if we're throwing roses at me then we should throw roses at kenneth for also beating them the no. the reason the renegades are three and one right now is because they played the snow trap. Revenge game against me. Football bobbled on the return and lost against DC. Ron Brown. You on the table and 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 to to be clear to YouTube, 
Watch the table. I don't know if it exists anymore. But on the table, you guys loved Ron Brown because we did. I loved Rondo, man. He was he was good. Like listen, he played season. like he played like seven offensive snaps, and you guys talked about him as the go-to receiver just because he had that one really good catch against the Animals. Seemed like that guy. Him and I was Kenneth. throwing to Abe and Kenneth more than no, him. But Abe and Kenneth were my other two guys. I loved the Renegades last year with you on it. All right, so there's, there's a lot of potential Listen, on that offense. There's 43 year. seconds left, and the East Orange Renegades, if they had Corey Hammond at quarterback, what would they be doing? They would probably set up to go. <laughs> Yo, Corey. Go stop, ahead. stop, just stop. I'm, right, being, you, I'm being unbiased. So you're set, you're establishing the play action on first and 10, trying to I am not going to play action with 43 seconds because no one is believing that I call play action on fourth, uh, first and 10 with 43 seconds. Are you asking, would you win this game? No, I'm asking, would you throw here and try to score? Yeah, you do. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Especially if you have the ball at half like they do. The ball thrown, a wobbler caught and brought out of bounds, so the clock will stop. So it's good Picked to see that, that the Harassi. Renegades are, are going to try to stay aggressive with 33 seconds left. But with three timeouts, you let it get to 30, you're okay 14 to 6 against the U. That's a problem. Guys, that's a problem because the U right now is more vulnerable than they've ever been. And if you think and you have the belief on offense, with 30 seconds left, you have a six foot eight, 260 pound weapon. And I haven't seen him enough this year except for against me. <laughs> yeah. And I don't play defense or I would have tried to hug? cover him. Yo, I'm I gonna give make, you a hug. I'm gonna make you a shirt that This says, is why I did not call the DC Buzz Corey. Renegades. <laughs> all right, it all Welcome to the Corey Hammond show. I'm your producer, let me, let me ask you guys this. <laughs> music for the I, music supervisor. <laughs> when I came in to go to the bathroom earlier today, <laughs> did you not talk about Corey Hammond even when I was not the starting quarterback? Second and one, Kenneth Stewart. <laughs> Second and four, excuse me, because he did not get nine yards. In trouble. And the Throws this one. Yes. Yeah, Megatron! Megatron! Oh, oh, my God! That counts as me calling a timeout. Technically. <laughs> Technically. You, you called it in theory. The clock is stopped on the timeout. You can have three midgets covering him, because anybody that's not 6'8 is a midget compared to a 6'8 person. He's a monster. And throw it to him. And like I did against BIC last year, where he had 184 yards receiving. My man. I love you. I love you. I, love I you. might be autistic and no. You sound like you sound like you're talking about an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> it's 16 seconds, 14 and 6. You score. I'm Matt Ryan. Is it not? Lord Corey is it Hammond not an ex-girlfriend? Fabian. Is it not an ex-girlfriend when I'm watching a team that I used to play though, for? But you're making the playoffs. Making the playoffs. I am not the starter for the Hawks, and I will still talk about that to went, this I, day. I just you went five. I want you five. to be happy. I'm you're trash. Fresh. I want you to be happy. I am depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody send a psychiatrist. Listen, guys. Oh, 16 I... seconds left. First and ten. I Kenneth, have no you idea better what throw the hell's it. Going Do not on run. Kenneth, you better throw this it. This one's thrown deep downfield. That's 30 yards in front of Abe. He's not that fast. No, Corey is not playing. <laughs> I am not playing. Ooh. This is a First half, is anybody giving more props to Kenneth Stewart in this season than no, me this, this no, game? I'm actually super against Kenneth Stewart. I think he's, well, I'm not. And gonna, I've given him you give props. Him tons of props. He just threw it 20 yards in front of Abel. Hey, that's your man's. For those who are just My man's got to eat. He's hungry. He's literally starving. It's Ramadan, guys. We are on YouTube. My guy Abe is starving, literally starving, throwing the ball. Second and 10, 12, 12 seconds left in this half. Oh, Kenneth Stewart is oh, is is above me in the quarterback depth chart because he starts for his team full time. Oh, this, is, this is what I do for a living. This is what like, this is like a, this this is is a realization I'm having <laughs> on a Sunday night. You listen to Corey go crazy. <laughs> I would have got, like, I come from a long line of bartenders. But this... <laughs> Get Let me get a shot. Let me get a shot. This is this uh, is hard to watch because as an East Orange former Renegade, I'm rooting for this team. You played for the Renegades? <laughs> we didn't. We couldn't tell. It'll be second oh. and 15. You want me to remind you what my record was? <laughs> the ball's placed on the 50-yard line, and God help us all. Here oh, comes the pressure. God cannot help you with this. Bing, bong, no ball way. stolen. No way. No, he's down. He's down. Oh, That's he's down, but down. he's clutching his neck. Rob, we're going to talk about it. That's Rashad Knight. That's what Sean That's made. a former immortal. Yeah. He did that against me, too. He, did, he ripped the ball out like that? No. Oh. I never let him let go of the ball. <laughs>
So. Oof, there is a Rashad comparison Knight. in the Rashad. chat from Fly Guy Guru. Oh my God. That is, sure. those, are, those are fight words. Oh, let me words. see. He called you Tanner. <laughs> Yo, Tannehill has a hot wife and has never played an NFL down like it mattered. I do not want to hear you ever call me Tannehill. I am a great-looking human being, like Ryan Tannehill, with a great-looking wife. But I actually care about football. You are a terrible human being for comparing. If anything, Matt Ryan got it right what? when he said that I was Ryan Fitzpatrick because as a backup... I am on fire. You're Mr. Steal Your Job. <laughs> but I have, also, I have also played for so many teams that is apparent that teams in the A7FL do not want me to be their star. And at the I end of the first half, your score, the Patterson U14, the Renegade 6. Why is this about me? Uh, no, you make we it. Didn't yo, he's yo, yo, my yo. mans. Hey, hey, yo, my mans. What? Welcome to you two. Well, well, it's the night game. I have my hair down. Let me, right, let me right. fix I'm my bacon Ryan. neck. Chilling, let me man. fix my bacon neck. First of all, you see this? Express, when you sell me a shirt, do not let the neck bacon as much as you have. And second of all, the Renegades are where they want to be. Down eight within striking distance against you when I play for the Renegades. To be fair, we lost 66 nothing. Damn, y'all did. The game's not over. Now let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. And a big, big play to start things up for the Renegades. When Kenneth Stewart rolls to his right, he's one of the best quarterbacks in this league. Other than that, Things happen, but Kenneth Stewart has proven at this point in this this season that he's a capable quarterback that has proven that he has the opportunity to take on chances. Craig Pitts just punching Listen, people in his face. I only face. have one critique. Can yes. you do this? That's a four penalty. Four quarters. Dante. Can you do this for four full quarters? And the well, let's is be no. let's be fair. The is no. Let's be fair with a backup quarterback that the U is playing with because Huff is the starter. Wow. And they are up 14-6. We're going to go Moon is legit a backup quarterback, and he's not Moon. Like, he can't make things Moon happen. is one of the best players in this league. He's so, not so one of the best quarterbacks. I, I, have a different, I have a different assumption on this. Okay. The U are playing defensive football in every way possible. Right. It is it is to protect them going into the playoffs. Right. It is like LeBron in the regular season in the NBA. Mm -hmm. You're doing just enough. Well, as we see Demar with, with his first touchdown, he scored both touchdowns, a former Savage player, and let's be honest, an electrifying player because we've seen him do even amazing things at the quarterback position. Now he's showing, showing off at the wide receiver position and apparently at shooting guard, dunking it there on on the uh, the, the goalpost, but, but the U right now is playing to win the game. Well, let's take a look at the halftime stats. Uh, the Patterson U dominating on both sides of the ball, rushing for 77 yards, passing for 95. All that coming from Kareem Moon, 172 total yards for the U who have the lead, 14 to six. And the reason the... Go ahead. go ahead, go ahead, Corey. The reason the Renegades are still in this game is because you look at that last stat at the bottom of your screen. No turnovers. No turnovers on each side of the ball. So it, that that's going to be as we s send into the second half. Uh, honestly, guys, based on what we've seen, the U is playing a very conservative style of, of, of football, which we were maybe not familiar with as we've grown accustomed to them stepping on the throat of teams that they feel that they're better than okay. but after losing two consecutive games in opportunities to win they see this game as a must win and they're making sure that they take care of the football which is most important even though on paper guys i think that they look to be the better team the, I, the, uh, the you to me are the second best team in the a7fl right now they're not playing like it because they know they are, and they know once you get into the playoffs, I think they kind of want a lower seed. Right. I think they want to make this year a challenge, and the U will start off with the ball, and it will be brought down field on the three-on-one. And so moving forward at the second half, as, as we get closer to crunch time where, you know, first half, guys, we're having a really fun time talking about both of these teams, but with 14-6... 14-6, this is a lot closer than maybe even me and you, Matt, yeah. 
Rob thought it was going to be 70 to 6 not, at the halftime. Not at half. But 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 me and you Matt, we're looking at this it's a lot closer than maybe we expected the U to be after a, a, a two weeks of losing. Is it? I mean this 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 game will answer is the U worse than they were How many in their championship runs or are they just less motivated and this game is going to speak a lot to that as we I mean, move into I, first I mean, and ten and gentlemen, i don't know how many of you guys have gone back to back winning championships but it, it gets probably hard. none it gets hard to wake up in the morning and want to win more because he did it already and he what did it twice in back to back years right. what are you proving now the you handoff coming on the field great run. big run it's looking like big you again to the 40-yard line. You can't keep it up with the U for four. That's what people don't understand. It, it, it's all amazing. The only way to beat the U is to outscore them. And what's, what's, the, that, right? what's the strength of running? It's their okay. defensive line. Yeah, and and if the U lost. can block the defensive line like they did on that play where they get seven yards on just an easy zone run to the right where D-Train's out in front blocking, if they can get seven yards on runs like that, they're going to beat this run against team. 100%. They will beat this run against team. It's just, just going to look good early. And oh, and off. That's the deep train. Chugga, 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 chugga. Come on now. Come on, ride the red train. Now, Shoot you right again, in. Can you stay focused and strong for four full quarters? My, the answer to me is no. No one can keep up with these guys for four quarters unless your name is B.I.C. Or Rare Breed. Rare Breed got him. Rare Breed got him. That was a travel game. To a neutral site? Rare Breed got him. We don't travel well. I don't know. Whose fault is that? B.I.C. beat the Rare Breed at him. The Rare Breed beat the... I'm not saying that, that what you're saying. I am the first person that you will see on this broadcast talk about how the U, in a poor game, lost to the B.I.C. in their best game by two points. I made that clear in the last yeah, you game, did. You did right? Say that. You did. But at the same time, you're playing the Renegades. Snap, cuts up field and immediately stifled. <laughs> and that's Trey Baskerville, who, like I said, is trying to make his name known regardless of the color of his car. Shout out to Ryan DePaul. Who's Ryan DePaul, the chair for NFL us. president, decimating furniture. And at this point, it's just Rob Fabian running the clock out on CP3. <laughs> oh, God, because I'm ready. CP, listen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having me. I was here, you know, announcing for three Rob is straight. a great-looking human being, by the thank way. You, you are so all lucky yourself, to hear that. Man. man, come on now. The beer gang for Second me and three right for the U. Tossing, that's going to be Moon cutting towards the sideline, cutting down field. We'll get the first down and an all expenses paid trip to the Renegade sideline. And it will be first down. And joining guys, us now. Thank you for having me. Appreciate thank you, Rob. You, Big Rob, you, you are a gem, you are a treasure, and we will miss you. And joining Enjoy us your now life. is another A7FL champion, a man who knows what it's like to play under the lights on a Sunday night. It's Corey yeah, CP3 just, Price. Corey, how are you? Good, doing real good. Yeah, they're just trolling me at this point. Just <laughs> just champion after champion running in. And I got stats galore, but zero wins. Yo, CP. 14-6. Yeah. What do you say moving forward with this game? How does the U control? And then I'll go back next play. How does the East Orange Renegades win this game? I would say, honestly, how the U controls this game is how they should have played last week against Rare Breed. Yep. If you're the bigger team, you need to run the ball, establish dominance, and get the other team up. Cut through. So Kareem Moon doing what he does better nearly than anybody. This guy is my idol and has been since I've been playing. <laughs> Just when you're in the moment like that, Corey, and you know that you have to change direction, both Corey's, and you have to basically completely tear down any idea of what you initially wanted to do on this replay. You see all of this pressure, all well, of this. Let me let me just it, like intercept this this question here. I cannot do what just happened here, yeah. so you're not talking to me. By the way, go ahead, Corey Press. Um, I would say honestly, being a guy uh, of more of a scrambler quarterback, I would say this is the worst case scenario for a defense because honestly, once we're in the open field, all we're seeing is green. And then we'll, all we have to do is make one move, and then it's over. It'll be first and ten. A snap and a handoff cut to the outside. Beautiful run, has an open lane, but brought down hard with the tackle. 
Patterson knew that one and that we, time by Sadiq Pitts. And on that play, you see Sadiq Pitts getting the opportunity to get some yards. Samad Jenks making the tackle seven or 12 yards down the field, but we talk about the last play. Very, very different circumstances between the two guys talking in, in this booth. I'm sacked. CP3 is probably scoring a touchdown on the play. So first uh, and 10. To go back to your question earlier, though, uh, what does the U have to do? And this is it. Just pound the ball. You see the Renegades have got their hands on their knees. They're getting tired. You have to pound guys. And that's and that's the interesting thing about it is, like uh, Rob Fabian was saying, too, you have to play this team for all four quarters. Mm -hmm. And the U know how to turn it on and turn it off, shift gears. And shifting gears into the end zone, Sadiq Pitts will make it a two-score game. And, and I'll put this out there. When you have to – when you have to – pay attention to the run as well as the pass and the quarterback. That first fake and or obviously Sadiq Pitts takes it for a 13-yard touchdown. And when you have to honor Moon as a potential run threat, the Renegades are in a tough spot there because they're going after Moon and Sadiq Pitts is just walking in the end zone, easy touchdown. And in a final score in Baltimore, the Baltimore Gators defeated the hit squad 28 to 13. Okay. So that solidifies for uh, for the for the Hawks, I believe. I hope shot Amari Skinner. Uh, I hope Amari Skinner, who made a fool of himself last week, and I love talking trash about Maryland, but I hope Amari Skinner made a couple of plays to make me look like a fool <laughs> in that game for the Gators. So that will drop the hit squad to one and three on the season. I've seen this story too many times watching and playing against the U. <laughs> you play them very hard in the first half, and then boom, they hit you with that first touchdown in the third quarter, and I see your team just gets demoralized. Yeah, sounds familiar as a rene former renegade playing at BIC. And it will be a one-point attempt from the five-yard line. Spider-Man in there now, a quarterback. As Demar. Demar. Now cutting through at his own 25, throws down, failed, intercepted into a beautiful lucha roll. That is the most, that is the most that impressive I've ever been about Qua. And I, I, I will go out of my way to try and take away from this man's skill, but that catch on an extra point opportunity from Demar yeah, beautiful. is and absolutely fantastic. Let's making, look, making he makes the, the play which, which Let's be honest, CP3. I would never have made that. You would have obviously made that. Well, and then the throw to zero week. people there is the difference between me and him. Uh, I would have just taken player. a look sack player. and look not player. looked look terrible. Look at that. Look at that. He might not have made the play, but look at the pressure. Yeah, tell me about it. I remember playing against this guy a couple years ago in the showcase. Aggravating. Literally. Who'd you play for in the showcase? Who were the quarterback for? Oh, I was the Hawks quarterback in yeah, it's, the showcase. It's, it's tough, right? It's a tough thing. <laughs> CP3 is one of the best quarterbacks in this league. If, you're, if you need a quarterback in this league, which a lot of you teams, you definitely need a quarterback, I would give this guy a call. I don't know. Sure. Uh, it's just me. That's Ron Brown, my guy. Fumbles the ball around the five-yard line, gets it. Is he? Tries to make a miss on the first hesitation. Can't get it to go and will be stopped at the first level and it'll be first and 10. I'm Matt Ryan joined by Corey CP3 Price and Corey Hammond. We are live on the A7FL. He's going to have a channel. tough time with that. He's got two Corys. <laughs> now, honestly, um, to further your question, what I think the running gays need to do is to get out of that stationary offense. Mix some things up. Have your wide receivers come in motion because I see their wide receivers are getting jammed at the line of scrimmage yep. and getting no separation. Nope. That's a double whammy for a quarterback yep. that's not a pocket quarterback, let alone inaccurate. L let me ask you this, CP3, as a mm -hmm. quarterback and a champion in this league, let's not get it twisted. Everybody watching at home, the man next to me is a champion. And although I speak nicely, I am a stat guy. So as a champion in this league, when you got this... This, this Renegades roster facing this Patterson team, who are you trying to get the ball to? Now, um, definitely, I would run a more Buck-style offense. Okay, okay. That I seen last week that yep. had the U defense in shambles. Yeah, so for, so for but definitely mega watchers, watchers of the A7FL, Buck is the quarterback for the rare breed. And you're looking to get the ball to Megatron as they give the ball to Mo on a good run. Big push up field. Now, although a run on first down isn't bad, it's expected. 
running on first down, look, staying balanced as an offense is going to help the quarterback, whoever it is, and whatever they're doing, regardless of whether they're a, a running quarterback, like you may be in people's opinion, and myself, a quarterback that throws the ball, a, a quarterback that is able to incorporate a run game will allow for play action. And what you'll see from Kenneth Stewart as we continue this game is the play action and then roll out to the right is his most effective play. So seeing Mo in the backfield, number four, their best running back, gives Kenneth the opportunity for play action, which will potentially help him against this U defense. But let's be honest, this U defense is, is smelling blood and is looking for the kill on these plays. The snap and the handoff to Big Mo, trying to make something happen on second down. Won't go and we will go to third down. We're live. So, it, so it'll be third and manageable though, guys. And, and third and five-ish, third and six, is a lot better than third and 12. Mm -hmm. And as you see Mo run off the field and Xavion Ray Law, number three, run into the backfield, most likely to block, Kenneth Stewart is most likely gonna look to roll to his right and find one of the receivers down the field. And since, as, as, as you guys well know, I pilfered Eddie Pettio, the best Renegades receiver, and brought him to the Hawks. It's gonna be up to Abe L. And if it were me, Dondre Haynes, yes. a six foot eight, 270 pound athlete at tight end that I'm looking for for this conversion on it, third and six. Would it be fair to say if Dondre Haynes went to a more established team like the Patterson U or the BIC, that he would be the most effective weapon in the A7FL? Because if Dondre no was, you would have no I'll, I'll say this though, if Dondre cut up field. Trying to get the first down, and we'll get to inside the 35. And that should be a first down, and that's what, what, what Kenneth can do. Kenneth can get seven yards with will. Not, not skill, not speed, not elusiveness, but will. And great play on third down to get the first down, and that's the job of the quarterback, regardless of whether he's using his arm or using his legs. Now, I'm glad you went back to will, because just like Ryan said about me for so many years, uh, I would say, honestly, playing the cornerback position in high school and coming to this league playing quarterback, I willed my way to a lot of victories. And this is I would Kenneth say that that's still. true. What, how I would you, say you I willed yourself to a championship down in the championship game, figuring out yeah. a way to beat the Chiefs. First and 10 for the Renegades, who are very far from what we're talking about with, with CP3. Ah! This is what he needs to do. And he finds himself there swimming against this sharks. This is what he needs to do. But Corey, when you talk about making that transition from being a, a cornerback as your natural position, you're in the, game, the position you learned how to play the game at, and then transitioning to quarterback, does that field vision as a DB prove as an invaluable asset to you? I would say yes, because you know as a cornerback where you have to shut down the field. You know where the quarterback wants to throw the ball. You know where you have to break down, you know, you, you, you know timing routes and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, what what helped me a lot, uh, my first year playing with the Wolfpack, you know, me, KWAC, the ice cream truck, you know, yeah. Jamie, Salsa, a few other guys, um, we had a more of a renegade style offense, I would say. You know, KWAC was our Megatron. You know, we, we had one of a, a loser running back, Debo, but we also had a, a Rondo like Jamie, a speedster. And we were just doing it from that. But I would say in this offense that, that he's in now, it's, it's pretty good. Thrown deep Not intended for Megatron like and intercepted. It's, it's really tough for quarterbacks when they're learning the position to understand anticipation. Anticipation is knowing what's going to happen before it happens. And if you watch that play, Kels Gallimore, who's one of the premier corners in this league, which is very rare. CP3 can attest to this. Yes, he's when you're playing quarterback, there's very few people that can cover. And Kells can. And what he does is, unfortunately, to the 6'8 Megatron, he throws it outside of his catch radius, which means that he threw it within 20 yards of that man's arms. Yeah. Now, I'm exaggerating. But Kells Gallimore gets the interception there because when you're attacking a defense, you have to understand the strengths of, your, uh, uh, of the opponent that you're taking on and and Kells Gallimore gets the interception and and right now the 20 to 6 score looks a lot bigger yeah. with 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 Kareem Moon able to 
really rely on his offensive line to this try to win this game. See if your team still because a player or not. because Sadiq Pitts is in the backfield and he's looking to earn his job as a running back. And Pitts, Very who has a, run, has a touchdown so far today, yeah, and, taken and, down and by Malik, the predator. Uh, Malik, yeah, Malik is playing defensive end for the Renegades. Seven years ago, he played running back for a three-time champion in SWG oh, wow. Gators. And that is a man whose knees have failed him, but whose will and athleticism have not. And Malik has proven to be an absolute problem. Here, here's some SWG Gators highlights. Wow. This is this shout-outs to Ryan DePaul, who, let's be honest, Sarville is th is the best town I had in a conversation yo, yo, with him. Vargas, get out of my face. We I had a conversation with Spitt. Ryan DePaul Moose today. Spitt, one of the best Moose Spitt throwing it to And uh, this ball thrown down second field. Field. Caught. Seamless. Now, Seamless guys, bang bang play. A lot of guys say Moon can't throw, but what's that right there? Come That's, on. Guys. That was a perfect pass right to where it needed to be on the button and I was talking with Ryan DePaul today and he was hinting at a comeback. Yeah, well, Ra what Ryan doesn't understand is that the U, right now, roster-wise, is set up to beat the East Orange Renegades. So the East Orange Renegades were easily able to beat the Hawks. But right now, they're playing a team with, with way better offensive line play, comparable defensive line play, and way better skill position play. And right now, the U is feeling themselves and feeling like they can regain and, and, and CP3, there's a challenge CP3, on CP3 the field. PSA play, regain their swagger to face the top level teams in this A7 Bowl. The challenge is whether or not it was caught inbounds. I don't know, but the, the but but the question right now, as a, as we judge this, because the refs will decide if it's a catch or not. Yeah. But the three of us in this booth right now, and you God, always talk about it, Matt Ryan. You guys are pretty good looking, by the way. Appreciate that. Thank you. In this booth right now, I will ask the question. On paper, based on what we've seen, who is the better team? And to me, it's the U. Yeah, it, it, it has to be the U. And the I'll say this, Matt. When BIC played the U, and BIC gave their best shot against the U that played maybe not that great, they only lost by two. So what this season may come down to as we look at Johnny English very 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 intent on what that call was expressive is a word for it expressive is a great word for it man. when we talk about the what will actually affect this league moving forward the U is looking to get back on track so that when they face BIC and CP3 the fist or whatever number he wears because <laughs> Corey Price is a legend in this league, Call so on whatever. on the field will stand. It counts as a completed pass, so with 228 and counting. Like you were saying, the eye test, the eye test is a lot. So, so, BIC won the first matchup against the yeah. U. But it doesn't matter when they face again. And that's what this U team is playing for right now. But the thing right is, now. if there's a level of... Because when you talk about the BIC U in 2021, BIC got the win in that... got The U got the win in that first game. It was close. But as the second game, I, and I want to analyze that 2021 championship game, but it felt like Codrington wasn't where he was this of year. Course. And that the dot boss dropping of the ball up fear course. and getting out of play. But Corey, from your perspective, Corey Price, when you look at that 2021 BIC team and you look at the differences of this 2022 team, what are the positives that you can see in terms of development and seeing those changes and kind of just where this team I'm is glad, holistically. I'm glad you asked that, and, and we're going to start at the top. We're going to start with Sterry. Now, Sterry was the rookie of the year last year for a reason. Um, when I got hurt and Sterry took over, yep. I told everyone, including friends, family, you know, this is the best thing that could have happened for our team. Mm. He is an official quarterback. He's a high school quarterback, record-breaking quarterback. You know, so he has the mind, the talent for the game. But I would say... Just like Sterry in my second year, I won a championship, and I feel like he's going to do the same. And there's the handoff cutting up field to Big oh. Man. Oh, man. Just laying the hammer Darryl down. Daryl Luck. Daryl Luck trucking fools, hitting them with that right stick, going directly downfield. And one thing that I know is that 
I couldn't take a tackle to save my life. That is why I'm in the booth, I have my fancy voice, and I stay away from the violence. But I love football. You're good at what you do. Thank you. Oh, you're too kind. Um, and so are you. You two are two of my favorite players to watch in football. Not in the A7FL, in football. Um, I'm better than... I think I, I say this wholeheartedly. Oh, we have the best football in spring football. We do. Absolutely. It's not. I, I don't now think it's a fair thing. fight. I'm glad you said that, though, Matt, because uh, uh, clearly guys know me. But when I ask guys personally, would you rather watch this or the NFL or college or, or the new league now, it's always this. And this is Moon. why Kareem does. Moon is a highlight every time. And he might not have gotten the touchdown, but he brings us to the end of the third quarter with a big, big play and getting the f getting some big momentum for a Patterson U team that's starting to feel like themselves again, guys. Like we talked about at the start of the broadcast, it felt like they weren't like themselves in the last couple of games. And we'll take a look. I believe this is the replay of that play. And you see cutting Yeah, and it's field. a lot easier to beat a guy like the Predator when you're Kareem Moon than you are Corey Hammond. And with with the with the huge rush off the right side of the quarterback, if you miss credit for me, honestly. running the ball, I, I give myself plenty of credit. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll be first and ten. Patterson, you in exactly the position that they want up to as we go into the fourth quarter where they start the ball at the 12-yard line. And 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 the Renegades are, are, are fighting the refs to let this go as we go to the fourth quarter. Guys, this is the point. Renegades feel comfortable 20-6 to six because most often than not, at the end of the third quarter when the Renegades have faced the U, it has been 60-6 to six yeah. as, we said to the, as we said to the break. I'm Matt Ryan. That's not Rob Fabian. That's Corey Price. But that's Corey Hammond on the other end of it. That and is true. That this is, has been that, a lot of fun true. so far. Like, I, I, this is my first Sunday night broadcast of the year. Mm -hmm. And yes. I like the fact that we're just able to talk football, interact with our fans, and we're able to be a part of this. Uh, <laughs> Will Franklin said we had two dead body highlights in Baltimore today. Keith Salmon and Marcus Cole. Well, Keith. Marcus Cole has, has been, been told for six years to pay for league fees, and he has absolutely worked Love up Marcus. a debt as opposed to paying. So, I mean, it's like a $200,000 debt at this point, and if you ask the, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this, is, this is terrible Maryland bias. But le let me also say this, in the New Jersey games today, mm -hmm. the favorite team has absolutely murdered their competition. And whatever that means is whatever that means. But Baltimore feels really comfortable moving into next Starting week. the fourth quarter here in Terrell Lock to the end zone. Welcome to Patterson. Touchdown, you. And this is the offense we've been waiting to see from the Patterson U for the last Whoa. month. And that's a silly. I'll put that one up on Instagram. Guys, can I ask you a quick question? Sorry to cut you off. Absolutely. Do you guys think if the Patterson U brought this team to the rare breed last week would have been a different game. I Patterson U brought this team to the U last yeah, week. Yeah, it's well, the, I, the I, Patterson I'm U, seeing, the Patterson U skill position players, Corey, mm -hmm. are the same Patterson U skill position players. The difference between this week and last week is the effectiveness of the big guys up front, whether it's the offensive line or the defensive line. And the Patterson U lost last week because Young Buck called a better game than Huff. Like and with Moon at quarterback facing the East Orange Renegades, which the Renegades are a very, very capable defensive line. Now, the rest of the their offense, the, the rest of their defense the, is not the same. Let's take a look at the stats heading into the fourth quarter. One turnover for the Renegades. That told the story of the third quarter so far. Look at the rushing yards. And, guys. yeah, it's an unfair fight. About? This is what the U has to do. This is who they are. And rushing yards, like a lot of times, guys, is the dominance of your offensive line. And the dominance of the offensive line for the U has been apparent. Today. And here comes on the attempt. DeMar cuts inside, can't what throw a it. tackle. And you can see so Pittman he called a little hot. interception, and he made the great tackle. And uh, someone in the chat, uh, young old head, saying, and they, they're playing the Renegades, calm down. <laughs> 
The and Renegades the, are three and one. Yeah, on the, the Renegades year. are the two court, seed back, right now. To go back to your uh, uh, statement earlier, I'm seeing guys like Demar, Demar, uh, uh, Duke. Yep. Um, there are a lot of guys that they were missing. Not making any excuses for the U. Nope. But uh, I would say Rare Breed were missing guys too. But at the same time, the league and everybody wants to see the teams full staff and and because we're tired of the. He wasn't there, yeah. and that because you know how the page gets, and guys. You know. yeah. and can you can you break down the page for us? So guys, uh, I've been personally Cor playing. Corey's on it right now. <laughs> I've uh, been personally I'm, playing I'm at, since I'm answering something right now um, because I'm constantly under attack. We have a Facebook page where all the guys from the league can comment, post, or whatever. So uh, God forbid you get mossed on your head, you know, this Sunday, or 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 you get ran over. Best believe you're going to be on the poster on the page Monday morning. <laughs> and that's why my man Corey Price wears velvet because he makes it look so smooth. It, it is that so everybody's got to look. And here we go with the start that's of the three-on-one. That's my three guy, on Ron one. Brown. He might make a play right here. Cuts to, the out, right, right. cuts to the outside and gets to about the 25. Ask Kells Gallimore a starter. Let's be clear. Because I said Ron Brown was going to do something. He didn't do anything. <laughs> So if it was not a starter, a, here's you would have. Uh, here's the thing about Kells. Uh, I actually played against Kells my first game when yep. he was a bomber, 2015. That uh, was a long time ago. Yeah, uh, keep going, keep old. going. I love these stories. Uh, so uh, my first game uh, against Kells and the Bombers, they actually blew us out. Um, we were a rookie team. But uh, Kells. The Wolfpack, right? Yes, the Wolfpack. Yep. Uh, Kells, uh, back then, I would say great two-way player, still fast, awesome receiver. Not as scared to go up against your number one receiver. He's um, a corner. All, yeah, always going to play hard. Very underrated. Very yeah. underrated. I'll say as a quarterback, when I see Kells on my wide receiver, if it's a fast wide receiver like Eddie Pettyote, my guy, <laughs> I'm going all day because that hair weighs him down. Yeah, I might be cutting mine soon, too. <laughs> Man, you play DN. You, you You'd be getting like three sacks a game playing <laughs> DN as a quarterback. I, can uh, play. I, I, I am growing my dreads out so I can get that speed. You couldn't pay First me to cut my hair. First and 10, right Kenneth, Kenneth the young bull. Better be looking and, for Dondre. And a bull rush coming towards that line and getting caught on the jersey and stopped and stifled. Okay. Um, In the fourth quarter, when you're down by 20, your quarterback has to take control the offense you know this better than yes. anybody cp3 I was, I was just you've never that. been in this position even as a wolfpack player you've always been for a team that's been pretty good so well, so no, down that's, 20. that's that's not actually not true um, that is actually not true. we 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 got blown out my first year playing against savage which is respectfully a top tier new jersey team or work. if lj was here he'd say we the best for savage but they gone so whatever and, and and but i would say you're right the only bad loss i really took was against the patterson u in the 2020 championship so so down 20 quarterback it's on you make a play now, kenneth you're my guy I'm rooting for Watch you. Watch that safety number Let's 25. See what you got. And here comes the blitz coming in, thrown down in reception, and gets up to around the 40 before he'll run out of space to run. And that's the Greek freak. He, he's been all over the field, lining up, ready to make a play. This also is the first play he's made, and it'll be. And that's taking true. a look. For the Salas tournament. Yeah. And, and, a, and an you update beat me twice. on the score. To be fair. An update on fair. some Maryland scores, Corey. The rare breed defeating the DC Buzz 50 to 22. Stays in line with, with like where they're know, at. I would what like to know what was the Gators' game. hit squad score? The Gators' hit squad score, which we had earlier, was 28 to 13. Gators over the hit squad. So it's interesting, DC Buzz, I would say a better I, team I'm than a, the hit I'm squad. A, I'm a Maryland team. Hawks, by the way, first and ten. You're a part of the southern team, region. I'm trying. I'm trying to di differentiate from me being a former renegade and a thrown down. Hawk. Ooh, crossing lanes there. Not really. Uh, not really picked up. Honestly, I'm not sure what happened if there. I, you if speak I, if to I that. If I was Kenneth, right? I was down three touchdowns in a championship game. Before. Honestly, he needs to just calm down. It, 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 trust me, Matt. It's it's harder than it sounds. Oh, I I couldn't even. You have guys in your face. Yeah. But he has to just calm down and trust his ability. And, and, and having a veteran presence, like having you on the sideline, someone who's been there before, mm -hmm. has to be such a key asset to a young quarterback. 
when you deal with younger players who come into this league for the first time or only in it for about a year or two, what's the best advice you can give them to give them some sort of confidence? Because a lot of these guys have played high-level ball before, played yeah. college ball or high school ball. Some have had NFL experience. But the transition to this game, as you said about these new states coming in, there is an adjustment. And also playing on national television is also a huge adjustment. What, what is some advice you can impart to younger players like you might have done to a Sterry Codrington or a Kaysan Campbell, the snap? I would say, honestly, as cliche, wow. wow and in her so, that is, yikes. I would say, as cliche and boring as it sounds, listening and film watching will take you a long way. It really will. Trust me. Being a young player, a guy that never even played the quarterback position, the film watching, and uh, I will call myself sometimes a chameleon because I like to, you know, uh, uh, hey, copy, call it what you want. But I, I, I like to watch the best guys in the league and duplicate what they do. Hmm. And that's that's the best. I, I, that's some of the best advice I've heard regarding football. And I think that's key to any player. I mean, like they say, uh, Matt, it's a copycat league. Yeah. And, and you look at how the, the defenses have evolved. Look at Troy out there. Look at <laughs> Troy uh, also, one of my former receivers, championship receiver. Um, awesome guy, used to play with Matt. You talk about a, I would say now. Since look, at, have, look at him, <laughs> his smile yeah, is huge. <laughs> First play of the game. Many incredible players that guys doesn't even, don't even know about, man. It's, it's, it's and that's the great thing about this, this league expanding, because some of these players may move, may go to different parts of the country might be able to bring the game there and the snap. Duff the reverse, the football ball still loose and the Renegades will pick that up. Now Matt, this is what happens when we try to be too pretty. Yeah, it's the trickeration. Like this is something that is very Patterson you, something that they're known for doing. I would say if Huff was in the game, then that, would, that might work. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, is that no where the East Orange Renegades are at right now, they cannot allow the U to just meander down the field and get first down after first down. They need the ball back immediately because as the time ticks down, they're down tw they're down at minimum three scores. And the U, even though they haven't looked as great as they should have over the course of the year, they're looking good enough to beat this Patterson, this this East Orange Renegades team. And it will be from second down. The handoff cuts up field, stops, spins around, and will be stifled. Yeah, it's really tough. When, when you see a guy break three tackles and still get zero yards, that's that's more of a credit the to the defense. Mm -hmm. the because it takes more than one person to take down a player. And teams like the Rare Breed with guys like the Wolverine can can assume a one he, on one tackler. We've been talking about this idea of a reset if the first player you could have. In terms of defensive players, I think Ricardo Freeman outside if yeah. I'm looking for a guy on the front line, he's the first front four, front five player I'd have. But I'll, say, but I'll say this yeah. sideline to sideline, and he will hit you. But I'll say this it. if you got a, a a guaranteed pass rush I'll take that as you see Craig Pitts get some pressure and Kells Gallimore with a immediate tackle on Ron Brown. As we look at third and third and eight. Long for the Renegades. And look, the you you off of a loss is a tough team to play. And you, Corey Price, and myself, if if we had the opportunity as quarterbacks to quarterback this Renegades team. To be fair to Kendall Stewart, who is as has tried his best, I don't think that there's plays that he's missed, but the task is a, a tough it, one in, facing the U after two losses. When it's your first real season as a starter and you're playing against the back-to-back -back champions, and if it's coming off of two losses, one loss, a win, it doesn't matter. You're still playing against a team that has a level of cohesiveness because of the amount of time they've played together. The U has been the top team, championship or not, at the end of the year since I've been playing in this league. Yeah, uh, and since uh, since 2019 when I came in, first seeing you as a PA immortal, uh, calling the games from the snack stand, uh, it was just seeing that level and watching you guys beat them in 2019 was startling yeah. because it showed the true parity of this league 
And I'm excited to see what happens if when Ohio and Florida come back. Like Corey said earlier, when Texas, you know, and the down south guys join, you know, because they breed football down there, we're going to see what they're about. Yeah. Fourth and one. Gets the quarterback is stopped. not going to get there. Immediately in the air, Jamaica, as well as Mame. Number 15. Chill out, Duke. I remember when Air Jamaica used to play running back. <laughs> I remember when Air Jamaica was one of the, what, the premier player for the U. Mm -hmm. And that's that's maybe going back a decade. So we're talking about 26 to 6, 636 left in the fourth quarter. And although the East Orange Renegades, they came into the season very, very confident in their chances, starting the starting the season off against the Amherst, playing the Spank Town and winning, and then beating my team the rival game. Yeah. It, it, where, where they had something to prove because they, they told me as their quarterback, you're trash, and then they proved it, which I'm still struggling to eat right now. You were perfect today. Today you is different than man, when I, I played against this so Renegades team. Himself. And then we could be three and one right now, man. Like, I just want to give you a And Corey, Corey Price knows this. If, if I beat this Renegade team, because it was on me personally, and as there's six minutes left, 26-6, we see 16 in motion, D-Train running down the field, you know, defensive line for the Renegades, making the play that they should make. Right. Corey, like you said earlier about number one, that linebacker, he's been my favorite linebacker. Yo, Samad Jenkins is the best run-first linebacker that there is in this league. Yes. Now, there's no, better... He reminds me, there, me of a younger Steve Knight. Yeah, yeah. but there, there's better, wow, there's better pass... Forever. Uh, there's better pass-first linebackers in the league. Samad Jenkins is the best run-first yeah. linebacker in this league. Let, let's let's let extrapolate that out. Predator is one of the best pass rushers in this league, period. Uh, Patterson, you had problems against him. Trey Basterville, great pass rushing defensive end. And then when you add Dondre as the defensive tackle that's coming in third, tertiary to give a, a, a ac acronym for people that are that are looking for SAT words when they're when they're looking for more than a 1600. Right here. When you when you're tertiary, yes, I love you, Matt. You definitely <laughs> scored higher I on the SAT. Not. But the I tertiary terrible. guy being Mr. Everything, number 15, as, as a lot of a lot of Moon is just time. taking too his time, time getting 15, 16, oh. going back 13. Oh, oh, look at the first thing. So, I can't do that, Corey. <laughs> I can do that, but I don't want to. Yo, I looked, I looked at Corey Price, and I said, I can't do that. And he looked at me with a sincerity that none of you could understand. Yo, let me let me just explain to you. The the Patterson U, as much as every fan in this A7 FL League wants to say, and, and you know this better than anybody, Court, because you are a BIC champion against the Chiefs who thought that they owned it they first half. And the then, then they showed they, they showed up in the second half of the championship game like CP3 and like Courage ain't gonna beat us. And guess what? You did. Absolutely. Ball thrown deep, and that one will go out of play. Yeah, that's the chances that the Chiefs had against BIC when CP3, the guy sitting next to me, <laughs> beat them. By the way, by the way, everybody that loves Pilato, eat this. This is a statement of fact. The man sitting next to me ate you up, and you will still to this day say that he can't pass on you. And he beats you. And he won, and you lost, and you trash. Period. Guys, 322. This is how far the, the rivalry goes, guys. It's a lot. This the Chiefs don't for, exist. For those, for those who are, are, are okay. And uh, I'm still uh, letting Pilato know you <laughs> lost to CP3. I'm Matt Ryan. Moon uh, at quarterback. I, I was the play-by-play -play announcer. For oh, there's some odd. Kareem Moon with the tackle. Uh, it has been a – it was a close and caustic game up until the start of the second half. And then things started turning. Well, what happened was is you had two teams in positions to define themselves, right? And you had to the, the, – you define, define the rest of their season as losers or winners, and they won. And the Renegades define themselves as 
good team or close to good team and they define themselves as close to a good team so they will leave this game like, look at that if court. everything jump stays man, jump man out there kyle they needed these guys last week. let me ask you this they were there if, if though, you're kyle if was, if, if, if you are kyle not huff cp3 and i've said this about uh, about the u multiple times because i love throwing to guys that used to play for the jets and played for bic and i would easily get 100 yards as their quarterback if you're the quarterback there instead of moon you feel comfortable with two minutes left against the or East Orange Renegades, 26 to six. Comfortable is an understatement. Comfortable is an understatement. I'm comfortable so just playing for the U, period. Period. Thank you. I'm just being honest. You're great looking, by the way. Let me just say, that. let me just emphasize that. It'll be two minutes left to this go, nice. second and 15. That's Three definitely a two minute set. warning. They're not gonna let you go. Three on the line. I'm a liar. They had the two-minute warning, then reset. Cutting up field. Kareem yeah. mode. Kareem Silky. mode. Why are you so talented? It bothers me that you're that talented. A minute 50 left to go, and he gets it to the 25-yard line. So, so nice me and Matt, smiling. Corey, right? Me and Matt are talking about this game and, and applying the level of effectiveness that me and him have. And you're watching this game and seeing the – the, the openings that the, the Patterson U has against the Renegades, is, and they're like, oh, my God, this is an easy game. And the Patterson U are a champion. The East Orange Renegades are a up-and-coming team. Call timeout. The Renegades are a great team, Matt. Yeah, I, the, I've Corey seen Price, a lot. I've the Renegades a are a tough team like, that you Matt, play against. Me, like Corey said, even though we beat them in the, in the two games in the showcase, yeah. Those games were both competitive. And oh, close. I don't doubt I would, it at all. I would like, challenge anyone to I, go back and watch those games, and and, and trust me. I might talk a fair amount of like I might be jocular, but the problem is when it comes to how all these things are, uh, it's I would never shade the Renegades. They're not of a lot of teams that I would consider to be at the upper level of the league. Yeah. But I feel like the Renegades, they have the tools to knock on the, the door. Renegades three and two. The Renegades the things that that it takes to be there. Yeah. But have they learned how to use but those But that's the guys? But that's so the that's thing the, is that yeah. they don't have the level of syncope that the, yeah, the BIC right. have, the U have. They, honestly, the point is, is they have not suffered enough to realize – Difference I think a loss in the team. playoffs me, is going to hurt. Me, up, me. and there's a caught, nice. and it's caught Go by on. number 19. Jump man, jump man. Everybody says jump man, jump man, and, and we kind of let that go. He's got hops. Joel Rivera is a professional football player that yes. has been paid yeah. to play football in his life. He is better than almost every single player in this league. Professional and when he ma makes well, a mistake, though. he is better than you, Matt Ryan. Mm-hmm. You, CP3, and yes, me, sir. Corey Hammond. And the fact is is that the you have guys like that in abundance. So when they and, are and, and not an absolutely dominating the place. If, if, the, guy, the guy that play arena. Yes, sir. If, Lineman. If, Lineman, by the way. This, this is, Matt, this is two quarterbacks talking about you about lineman play because yeah. it's the most important it's aspect the, of football. It's the heartbeat of this league because it makes or breaks you because those – Two to four guys on a line with 33 seconds left to play are the ones that can set the entire pace of an offense and destroy a defensive rhythm. Thrown over and incomplete. But my question to you guys. Mm -hmm. And by the way, was, was that Moon? No, that was yeah, that Huff. That was Moon. That was not Moon. No, that wasn't oh, that Moon. Was, was that Huff? Nope. That was not Huff. That's, that's that was a, a, a guy with extreme athleticism that makes me look like an idiot. <laughs> right? but does not have the understanding that a guy next to me like CP3 yeah. has. And he makes the mistake of taking advantage of just running around yeah. and throwing and it. Not, and not Because the quarterback in. position is a lot harder to play in this league. Man. Ask ask all of the f the fans. I love the guys in the chat, yeah. man. I'm they, telling they, you, I, they, they, I want to hear from this? them. I can because, I'll, I'll yo, wait, I'll I can do this, this guy. But I have an important question I want to ask you both. Yeah. If the if the A seven F L hit the reset button in twenty twenty two, do you think that that twenty twenty three would that create a bigger system of parity, or would it create more chaos? And speaking of chaos, in trouble here, the court the quarterback number one in a lot of trouble. That is Kareem Williams. That's Prince Reem throwing across his body wow. and getting it in to easy Learned Wingate. Some tips from Moon, I see. 
Now, that's the Patterson you being the Patterson you. Yes. That's the Renegades being the Renegades. But to answer your question, Matt, do you want to line up at quarterback week after week? I'll show I'll show you my body with all of the, the, oh, of the bruises, yeah. with all of the, the black and blue marks as a backup. And yeah. I will show you CP3, <laughs> who has won a championship in this league as a, and now is playing defensive end, to show you all the black and blue that this league is not for, and I love you fans. You guys are my anybody. favorite. It's not for everybody. It's not, not for everybody. Sign but up. It, and, and and do more than just speak about how you are better than all these guys because if you show up on the field against these guys, there's a difference yeah, of but there's the, a but to my question and we're gonna go to the two point conversion our final play of the evening throwing across his body and it's caught by the big D man D the D train getting the points but do you think if there was a reset to establish parity in the league would that be a benefit for the league? I think it would be a benefit for the league because what you would have to do as a league, if you said you wanted parity, you would have to admit that time in the pocket and blocking is, is the most important exactly. aspect mm -hmm. of football. Exactly. And at every level of football, at every level, you know, whether it's college football, professional football, or A7FL, if, if you don't block for your, your ball carriers, you're going to lose. And the A7FL yep. has proven once again in a full week of competition that the Hawks blocked better. And they beat the Animals. The BIC blocked better. And they beat Snow Tribe. And the U, which had a lot to prove today yeah. against a very talented Renegades team, they blocked better. And they won the game. And so the we could talk about all of the playmakers on wide receiver, running back, quarterback, CP3. I mean, to even answer your question, look at the NFL draft that just passed. What normally goes number one and number two? Offensive tackle or defensive, defensive end? Line. Yep. And if you can block and you can sack, you're going to win in football. Period. And on that note, a lot of sacks, a lot of tackles from this Patterson U defense here, <laughs> ending on the Schneid, ending their Schneid, getting their first win in almost a month, putting them back into play in the top three of the northern Divi of the northern region. We're going to be back next week, special Saturday edition, pre Mother's Day edition of the A7FL. Our games begin on Stadium Live at I 1 p.m. I better not play BSC. <laughs> But I'm looking schedule, at my guy. B I, I'm looking at my guy Corey Price, and if I play against BIC, you're you, you might be in a little bit of trouble. But we'll figure. We'll find out the schedule at a7fl.com for Corey Price, for Corey Hammond, for Big Rob Fabian, for Ryan DePaul, and David and Alex Soberman. I'm Matt Ryan saying so long from Asbury Park. We'll see you in six days' time right here in the Garden State. Love you. We're out. Love. Thank you.